So in my last video, I showed you this very simple constant current regulator circuit and how easy it is to cascade it out to drive heavier loads. Now, somebody in the comments actually mentioned that I should watch out for thermal runaway. Now, I didn't really get into it in that video, but that circuit was fully protected from that kind of failure. But it gave me an idea for a video. So we're actually going to cause thermal runaway and catch it on the thermal camera, which will kind of help you see how that works. And then also show you why that circuit from the last video is protected. So let's get right into it. Yeah, so here's that circuit from the last video. We had the constant current going through the LED, through the red transistor, through R then to ground. And it was very easy to set the constant current because we had the VBE junction voltage here of the blue transistor, which is the same voltage across R. So with some simple Ohm's law, 0.7 over R gives us our constant current. So the problem with this circuit, though, is if you're driving a lot of current, you're dumping all of that power into the red transistor and also the R down here, your resistor. So maybe what you're thinking is why not just parallel up all of those transistors, all of the bases, collectors, and emitters all tied together, and then just add more resistors in parallel. Now, theoretically, that works. In fact, I think if you threw this into some simulation uh, software, you'll actually see that this works fine. It's all of the loads are shared. But let's actually build this up and I'll show you what happens. All right, so there you have it. I have got the three transistors now in parallel and the three resistors in parallel. And the input voltage is only set to five volts right now. So five volts up here with a forward drop. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put the LED in right here. Let me draw that real quick. <laughs> so you got the LED actually up there. I missed that. But let's say the LED is only dropping two volts and then you've got your burden voltage down here, which is gonna be 0.7 volts, right? And then you really don't have much to drop and power is the voltage drop across these transistors times the current. So with about 40 or so milliamps and only dropping a few volts, that's not much. So we're going to change the input voltage to 35 volts and you're still gonna have your two volts here and your 0.7 volts here, meaning that the rest of that voltage needs to dump across these transistors, which is gonna be a lot of power. So let's go ahead and set up the thermal camera and I'll show you what happens. All right, so we've got our three transistors now in that circuit with the thermal camera and you can see them, I'm pointing them out here. Uh, I just inserted that one and by the way, these transistors are all uh, from the same bag. So they're all the same manufacturer, all from the same lot. Um, and now what we're gonna do is apply that 35 volts and you will see what happens. There it is. And you can see we're getting a lot of heat from this transistor here, the first one. And let me just touch it. Oh yeah, it's like on fire. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna kill that. And then what I'm gonna do now, so you saw the first one had the thermal runaway condition. Now what I'm gonna do is just pull that one out of the circuit and I'm gonna get a fresh transistor because that one's really hot. And I'm gonna put another one in there real quick here. Okay, so I just put the other one, or the brand new transistor in there, and what I'm gonna do this time is kinda of heat up this last transistor. I'm gonna squeeze on it a little bit there, and basically what I'm trying to do is heat this one up more than the other two. And I'm gonna to try to force a thermal runaway condition on this transistor, okay? So I just was squeezing that, so I think that one's the hottest one, and then I'm gonna apply the 35 volts, and Let's see which one runs away. And as you can see, yeah, this one right here is smoking hot right now. So there you go. So when you start this up, whichever one is the warmest will have the thermal runaway condition. So let's take another look at that schematic and I'll explain why that's happening. So what was that all about? Well, we've got these three transistors in parallel here. And even if you had all three of these mounted to a heat sink, the temperature was equal on all of them, still one of them would have this situation where it runs away because 
when one of as soon as one of them gets a little tiny bit more current than the others more current equals heat equals more power dissipation on that transistor and then what happens is is as it heats up it's going to then increase the temperature increase the temperature means more current through it means more temperature so you have that vicious endless cycle until that transistor is taking all of the current now the reason it, it works though still is because you've got all of these resistors down here in parallel and you're still regulating the same way we had in the single transistor circuit where you're looking at that junction voltage you know across this VBE here so you still have your 0.7 so this guy is happy and it's still regulating out even though only one transistor is taking all of the current it's still seeing it as a regulated current only problem is is that only one of your transistors is doing all the work so again what happens though is you know your junction voltage here starts dropping once you get more current and more heat through there so it's just that vicious continuous cycle until this guy or any of them it's a coin toss is taking all of the current so it's kind of an interesting example of thermal runaway which by the way this isn't the only example you can do this with a lot of other semiconductors in fact maybe I'll make a another video on this at some point maybe with another circuit altogether because it is kind of interesting so what is the solution to this well I actually showed you this in the last video but here it is so what we're going to do now is have those three transistors, but they're not perfectly in parallel. So all of their collectors are tied together. All of their bases are tied together. But the feedback is now through a series resistor. Okay, so you've got a resistor there to the base, resistor there to the base, resistor there to the base. So you can kind of see it's similar, except now we've added resistors they're in line with the feedback from each one of these legs and what that does now is at this point at the base right here you get an average voltage of what each of these is doing and it's self-regulating or it self-protects against those thermal runaway conditions because check this out if you had a situation where one of them starts pulling a little bit more current you're going to have more current through here which means that the voltage at this point right here goes up. So the voltage here goes up, and then this transistor, the blue transistor, backs off. Okay, so it's, it's, it stops uh, pushing as much current. So it's able to detect when one, any one of these transistors starts having that condition. So, you know, even if one starts going down, then it starts ramping up more. And it's an average voltage here of the three voltage points because we've got those series resistors there. And I usually use anywhere from like 100 ohms to 1K on uh, for this. And I think in that last uh, video I use the uh, 100 ohm resistors there and that works great and then you will be able to regulate uh, the current that you're trying to pull and it would be the current basically 0.7 here divided by that R times 3 1 2 3 and that will share that load equally on those transistors in fact I think it might be cool to build that up next and show you that on the thermal camera let's do that Okay, just built that circuit up, and now we've got our three transistors right in a line there. The last one here is the control transistor. So let's go ahead now and fire this up. 35 volts, same as before. I'm looking up at the meter, and I see that we are regulating the same current. And there you see it. Now all three transistors are heating up at the same uh, rate. So we don't have any that are... Uh, completely red and the other ones were cool so and I'm kind of feeling them right now and they are all at the same temperature so there you have it kind of a cool example of thermal runaway and how to prevent it at least in this circuit so uh, hopefully you found that interesting uh, thanks for watching